Uh, good morning. My name is John Harrington. I'm the Commissioner of the Department of Public Safety, and I'm joined by Colonel Matt Langer of the Minnesota State Patrol and uh, Chief Deputy Tracy Martin of the Hennepin County Sheriff's Department. Um, about 2 o'clock this afternoon, uh, we were notified of an officer-involved shooting on the 6300 block of Orchard. Um, our early reports was that one officer had fired a weapon, uh, striking the driver. Uh, the vehicle continued and eventually crashed, uh, and um, medical resources were then deployed to uh, the scene uh, to aid the people in both the vehicle that was crashed into and the original group. Uh, the driver of the vehicle was, uh, was deceased and uh, the BCA was then called in as a standard procedure to do the officer involved shooting investigation. Uh, the BCA responded to the scene. Uh, by the time the BCA responded, uh, there were reports of in the area of around 100 or so people at the scene uh, that were uh, highly agitated. Uh, the West Metro Command, which is a collection of police agencies from Hennepin County, uh, were called. A mobile field force was assembled and the crowd was asked to disperse and uh, shortly thereafter the crowd did disperse. Um, shortly thereafter, in, in conversation with Hennepin County, Brooklyn Center, Chief Gannon and others, uh, the uh, MAC, the Multi-Agency Coordinating Center, was opened. Uh, as as we had planned to do uh, so for Operation Safety Net. Um, and at the MAC, uh, we had Hennepin County Sheriffs, uh, we had Brooklyn Center uh, Police Department, we had uh, West Metro uh, Command staff, uh, we had the Minnesota State Patrol, the Minnesota DNR, and the Minnesota National Guard, and the Minneapolis Police Department uh, all assembled to coordinate a response to uh, the crowds and the uh, damage that we were beginning to see at that point. Um, shortly thereafter, there were reports of uh, crowds 100 to 200 uh, that were marching toward the Brooklyn Center Police Department. Um, as we understand it, and from both uh, our own reports and media reports, uh, we saw uh, rocks and other objects. Uh, thrown at the police department. There were reports of shots fired in the area of the police department. Uh, the mobile field force team uh, from West Metro uh, once again deployed uh, out in front of the police department. Uh, they were supported by, uh, once again, group from the multi-agency coordinating center. Um, within hours of that, a secondary group was, uh, we heard, was at the Shingle Creek uh, mall or business center, uh, and we have reports of approximately 20 businesses that were broken into uh, during that period. Uh, currently, uh, the crowd at the Brooklyn Center Police Department has uh, dispersed largely. There are still some pockets of individuals that are uh, out and about, uh, and that area is being con controlled largely by the West Metro Command, uh, supported by uh, Minneapolis, Hennepin County, and State Patrol and DNR. Um, we have also uh, have staff that are assembled at the Shingle Creek uh, Shopping Center, and we are mobilizing uh, Minnesota National Guard and others at the request of local authorities. Uh, at this time, um, we have uh, uh, essentially a full activation, and for those of you that have been following along with the uh, OSN uh, briefings, uh, we have moved rather rapidly into what we would call stage or phase three of the, of the deployment. Uh, and thus you will see a uh, robust uh, assortment of National Guard, state, and local police departments uh, uh, working together over the next two or three days as we, once again, uh, prepare for the trial and also are prepared for any other or uh, and any further uh, civil unrest that may come from the Brooklyn Center officer involved shooting today. Uh, at this time, I will turn this over to uh, Chief Deputy Tracy Martin. Uh, hello, I'm Chief Deputy Tracy Martin with the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office and I'm just going to reiterate real briefly what Commissioner Harrington uh, discussed. 
So the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office, um, we are assisting in coordination with the OSN group. Um, we're assisting Brooklyn Center and some of the civil unrest that we're seeing tonight as a result of this incident that happened. Um, however, just for everyone here, our, our primary focus does remain uh, the ongoing trial. So thank you very much, and I'm going to turn it over to Colonel Matt Langer with the State Patrol. Thanks, Chief Martin. I just have a few things and to not be duplicative of the Commissioner and the Chief Deputy. As the Commissioner pointed out, we've entered really quickly into Phase 3 of Operation Safety Net. And so for the State Patrol and the Department of Natural Resources, what that means is nearly all of our staff have been mobilized across the state and have responded into the metro area to deal not only with Operation Safety Net and the conclusion of the Chauvin trial in the near future, but also today's incident in Brooklyn Center and the ensuing challenges that we've seen last night into this morning. And so, as the Commissioner pointed out, tomorrow what you will see is a greater law enforcement presence, a greater National Guard presence uh, as we move into Phase 3. And to reiterate, the purpose of the entire Operation Safety Net plan is to protect one's ability to assemble and raise your voice and exercise your First Amendment rights but only in a way that's lawful without damage to, to property and uh, threat to other, others, the safety of other people. And so that's what you'll see in the coming days and weeks, and it's already started. And what you've seen tonight is a highly coordinated effort at the, at the MAC with the agencies that, commi that the Commissioner listed uh, to, to deal with tonight's ensuing challenges after the incident in Brooklyn Center. So the question was, uh, with the National Guard already uh, deployed in the metro area, uh, what was the delay in getting them out and about? And really is a matter of coordination and making sure we have a mission that, th that, is, uh, that they can respond to. Uh, and so they had been assigned to a mission of site protection at critical infrastructure and court security. And we had to move them from that primary mission and reallocate them to a mission of working uh, in conjunction with local law enforcement on property protection details at that time. So partly it was a matter of moving them out of areas where we have gotten them stationed, uh, remobilizing them, giving them new orders, and then getting them deployed. Commissioner, I've been watching squads go down 94. I'm hearing on the radio uh, more reports of looting on Lake Street. You know, handful, even more than a dozen businesses down there. What do you know about what's going on in Minneapolis? Uh, so the question is, is uh, reports of looting on, in Lake Street and what's going on in Minneapolis. Uh, we have been tracking both shots fired and break-in calls in Minneapolis. Minneapolis has mobilized strike teams uh, that they had at the ready to respond to those uh, at the precinct level. Uh, so that is, uh, I don't have an, an, a head count on the Minneapolis. The ones I had heard about were more on the Broadway and the Lowry area. So I will have to do some more checking to see about the Lake Street ones. That's new information to me. And you anticipate National Guard deploying seeing more of the National Guard in Minneapolis when the sun comes up here across yes. the city? I do expect, uh, having just uh, met with General Mankey, that there will be uh, more National Guard. Uh, there are more National Guard already moving into the city to supplement the ones that were already here for site security and critical infrastructure. As far as tonight goes, how do you stay ahead of this? I mean, I, was, I came in at 11 o'clock and it was a pocket at Brooklyn Center. Now it's South Minneapolis and North Minneapolis. How do you disperse to stay ahead of the groups that are looting or shooting or, or whatever? Um, so the question is, how do you stay ahead of the, the incidents that are going out? And I'd say there's two things that we've done. One is we've already reached out to our community partners and some of our business partners. Uh, we've reiterated our message about see something, say something, and calling in so that we'll getting, we're hoping and getting tips in as quickly as possible on that. Uh, the other piece is, frankly, um, this is a coordinated effort. And so uh, in the same room, we have Minneapolis uh, with their radios, Hennepin County. We have, we have a, a wider array of folks that are all paying 
close attention and who can then immediately deploy people to those areas at the first signs of trouble. Uh, it's hard to say that we'll get in front of it other than um, we are in a place where we will not be waiting to respond. Uh, so the question is, can we speak to anything else more specifically about the most recent shooting in, in Brooklyn Center? And unfortunately, I cannot. It's an open investigation, and it's too early for us to be able to make any real comment on it, other than the BCA uh, has been deployed. Um, what was in the press release is that Brooklyn Center does have body cams. We expect that uh, we will use the body cams. We'll take statements. Uh, our BCA forensics team did go out and do uh, a crime scene survey and take uh, care of evidence that way. But I can't give you any more specific pertinence about the particular case at this time. Well, last time this happened, uh, we had a curfew in place pretty quickly. Uh, has the Walls administration been talking about that? Have you made a recommendation about a potential curfew come, going forward? So the question is, is, has a curfew been issued and has it been discussed? And the question is, and the answer to that is yes. Uh, we have discussed it uh, both with the local authorities and with Governor Walls. Uh, in terms of uh, seeking um, clarity from the local authorities in Brooklyn Center in particular about their willingness and interest in doing a curfew.